Okay, welcome to another episode of Complex Systems Institute, whatever, Showtime, yeah. Rob said, uh, coffee, with coffee with Mursad, yeah. All right, that, but he said that we don't have all the coffee. coffee. Not everybody has coffee. All right, so the first question is, um, who you are, where you're from, and uh, something interesting about you, original victim. And uh, so these are people from the Complex Systems Institute, uh, students, uh, faculty associated, affiliated with it, Anybody who is interested in this issue. So we're going to start with you, because you have two more <laughs> Okay, uh, my name is uh, Dimitris uh, Papanikolaou, and uh, yeah, I am a... so easy, clearly. <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> can see that. <laughs> um, originally, I'm from Greece, uh, and I'm a junior faculty here. Uh, I started my tenure track uh, uh, as an assistant professor uh, this fall, and uh, I have a joint appointment uh, between uh, the School of Architecture and the uh, Department of Software Information Systems. Um, How is that working out, the joint appointment? It's, is it hard? I, I will get to that oh, yeah. question that? after I kind of uh, wrap up my... Oh, right. uh, but that's, that's a very... Actually, that's, that's, that's a very important topic. Uh, okay. uh, actually, I'm going to be discussing about that later on in my chair. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> we have issues. Uh, so, no, first of all, it's super interesting. So I came from uh, uh, before uh, UNCC. Uh, uh, I was uh, at uh, Harvard. Uh, I did my. Uh, I'll post. be bragging now. Yeah, that's I mean, you asked who, where we are from. Yeah, so exactly. I'm just responding to your question. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I did my postdoc there and my uh, uh, doctoral degree in uh, planning at uh, the School of Design. Uh, before that, I was uh, uh, I did uh, two masters of science at, uh, at MIT, uh, one at the Media Lab and one at uh, uh, the Department of Architecture. Um, and uh, originally, I'm for, as I said, I'm from Greece, uh, where I got my uh, degree in architecture engineering from the uh, National Technical University of Athens. Uh, and my research is about uh, uh, urban form and uh, shared mobility systems. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to be starting a lab here uh, called Urban Synergetics. Uh, basically, we, uh, uh, we, we do two things. We care about two things. Uh, our area of research, first of all, is uh, uh, intelligent mobility systems, uh, like uh, car sharing, autonomous vehicles, uh, bike sharing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the two primary areas of uh, our interests are, uh, the first one is to uh, study how uh, the form of cities and how the way land uses are, are, are allocated in space determine how people move in, 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 in cities and how this in turn determines uh, performance limitations for shared mobility systems. In other words, why is it that, uh, 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 that uh, for example, ridership in uh, bike sharing in, uh, in uh, Barcelona is something like 10, 10 rides per, per vehicle per day one in Paris is something like uh, five or six uh, uh, rides per vehicle per day. So the first area of research is about uh, developing models uh, uh, to study uh, how form of cities determines performance of, uh, of, uh, of shared mobility systems. The second area of research is to develop a prototype, uh, conceptualize prototype and test uh, uh, novel technologies for, uh, for, uh, in, for, uh, uh, for improving performance of shared mobility systems, particularly where we are interested in uh, in uh, how we can influence uh, social behavior with uh, incentive mechanisms. Uh, so, for example, how we can uh, create uh, social mechanisms or uh, like a price mechanism that can incentivize users uh, to uh, bring uh, shared mobility systems in balance. And when I say balance, I mean that the, the main problem in these systems is that uh, 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 since um, uh, three patterns are in space and time uh, imbalanced, uh, Quite often, some locations end up with no vehicles, other locations end up with uh, no uh, uh, parking availability. Uh, so always the challenge is how you can make systems that can self-balance. Uh, self balance. You self -balance. might be a professor. You gave us a lecture. This is cool. Well, that's, that's, so that was part <laughs> of my unique lecture. about it, too. So the, I guess the, the most unique thing about me uh, is, uh, well, that I have a joint appointment between uh, architecture and... Uh, <laughs> 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 Actually, yeah, I, no, I'm going to return right. basically the question you asked before, okay. and then I'll. Uh, yeah. uh, so, 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 the, the, so the joint appointment. I find the joint appointment from my side. Uh, the the joint appointment is something that uh, it's uh, of paramount importance. Uh, it gives me access to uh, both uh, uh, domains uh, and both disciplines. Uh, the one that deals with uh, uh, with uh, information and computing and complex systems. And the other that deals with uh, uh, with how we should shape shape space, 
so both areas are for me of uh, paramount import importance. Uh, uh, they allow me, to, they give me the opportunity to collaborate with, uh, with colleagues from uh, both disciplines. Uh, they also give me opportunities to have uh, uh, access to, uh, uh, to grants that uh, wouldn't normally be uh, available only from one, uh, one of the two disciplines. Um, uh, the, the, the challenging side uh, is that uh, I think that uh, we are at the point where uh, at an institutional level uh, every, everyone is kind of encouraging um, joint appointments. Uh, I think that uh, we are at the point where most institutions recognize the value of, uh, of, uh, of creating joint uh, positions. The reason is that uh, I think that as society we face pro complex problems that are just impossible to address or tackle from uh, the scope of one discipline. So I think that the need for joint appointments comes, comes from real life and the actual mm -hmm. the problems are complex. And I think that institutions follow this trend and they, uh, uh, they encourage uh, uh, joint appointments. But I think on the other side, the challenge is that uh, uh, at, the, at the administrative level, level uh, I think that uh, most institutions are not there yet to the point where uh, we can completely resolve the, the, the kind of bureaucratic or technical aspects of, of joint appointments. Sure. So just one example, uh, I mean, I recently had to kind of apply for, a, uh, for, a, for, a, for an internal grant within UNCC, uh, and I had to simply select whether I'm going to be evaluated by, by the committee in the humanities or by the committee in, the, uh, in STEM, math, uh, science, science, technology, and math, uh, engineering, and math. So, so eventually everything goes down, boils down to a checkbox that you have to right, check right, at the right. point. So, so I think that there's still a lot of ground that we should cover as, as institutions. That's a great point. So, yeah. You had, Laura, you had experience, right? You take the first session, so... Um, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm uh, Loaim Abdul Muhammad from Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, I, I got uh, my master's degree from uh, Virginia Commonwealth University uh, 2010. And they come. Uh, this is my second semester here in uh, UNCC, Complex System Lab. Uh, I got here to the lab actually from uh, one of my friends when I was searching about uh, uh, PhD uh, admission. Uh, I asked it like everyone, if you know, like a good uh, university that has a good program. And one of my friends who graduated from here and he was uh, also working with Dr. Mursad, uh, Dr. Khaldun, uh, I met him uh, on Facebook actually. Uh, we took online. No, he was with me in uh, oh, okay. uh, Virginia Commonwealth University when I uh, did uh, my master. Uh, he started there, uh, his PhD program, then he uh, transferred to UNCC. And we were like in talking about that uh, I'm planning to, uh, to do my PhD program, uh, PhD degree actually, and uh, he introduced me to UNCC and talked about uh, the complex system lab and Dr. Mursad, and he said, uh, I'm sure you will like it because he know what I'm interested in. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, he introduced me to Dr. Mursad, and uh, we really like to meet on uh, Skype. We met on Skype and introduced myself to him, and then I got the acceptance uh, letter. I decided to come here. Uh, I got uh, admission from like three or four universities in the uh, United States. Uh, but when I compared the program requirement uh, between the university, I found they were much harder. Yeah, UNCC <laughs> is a better program actually uh, regarding the research. Most of the other university focus on courses like you need to take uh, course like two. Sometimes it's maybe take you three three years to finish mm -hmm. the coursework. Then you start the research, and for me. It's kind of repeating my master's degree, so why I, right, right, right. Uh, but here I see like uh, the requirement is uh, much better. You can just finish the core courses then focus on the research, which means uh, the coursework, it's, uh, maybe you can just finish the coursework in one semester or two semesters at most, mm -hmm. and then you start working on the research. So that's what uh, was like, uh, most thing uh, I like about UNCC, that's what uh, brought me here. And you still don't know the research, if you will, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. 
research. Yeah, I, I just started the uh, research uh, this semester. So something so. interesting, unique about you? Uh, like what? Yeah, I don't know. Something private that you don't want to share with anybody. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's about. what we want. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's only going to be on the YouTube channel, you know, just the world. <laughs> so, um, something actually can share. Uh, I'm not Don't sure. tell me there's nothing unique about you that you're different from other people. Yeah, well, ev everyone is different from yeah, other, okay. but I'm not sure what you are looking for. <laughs> but we want to know, yeah. know you better. So that's how that, you? The, the one that uh, I think uh, maybe it's unique, some, some people uh, see it as a positive thing, some people not. That uh, I like to take my time on uh, focusing on anything or like studying things and sometimes I feel it takes me a long time because I don't have like a good time management but at the end I like to do something uh, anything in a perfect way so I don't like just to do anything and finish as early as I can but I like to finish it uh, as perfect as I can so that's why it takes Gee, a long I know time. That about you. you take the time to do one thing yeah, and I like that when you told me about, and they feel more comfortable actually when, when I found that you see this point, because I was uh, like worry if my professor uh, asked me to do, to finish everything early, so that will put me on, under stress. But uh, he's now, referring to a conversation we had already. Mm -hmm. I did not know you would bring that as an interesting thing. Cool. Yeah. Never know what yeah, you never know. Yeah. So you are next. I mean. Okay, what's Elizabeth. Question? What's your question? What's your what's, name? What's the okay? Who Elizabeth? are you? Why are you on this earth? I'm not what's gonna, your mission in life? Yeah, it's a talking. conversation, right? Leave um, the professor to look at him. Right? He's running for an office for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna go. Yeah. So tell me. Uh yeah. So Elizabeth von Riesen, and let's see. What are we? There's so many places to start this yeah, where story, are you from? right? Where am I from? Yeah. Uh, also, what do you call home? moving target, right? Um, oh. Home. Uh, there's nowhere. There's uh, originally Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay. I'm from Springfield, right? Um, that is not Boston. Really? So, no, no, really. I say I'm from Massachusetts. Like, oh, you from know, Boston. you're from Boston. I'm like, no, I'm not. Just go, go west. Go west, people. It's really different there. Um, so, what? Graduated from high school in 1988, do the math. In 1989, I showed you my research paper about chaos theory. Back in the day when it was on a manual, well, no, it was an electric typewriter, but it was like an actual typewriter. I still have this paper. I've been walking around with this paper for... Just to show how ahead of her time she was. No, it was just like my favorite thing. Right? If I could have picked any one thing that I did in my because I was in community college for two years, and then I transferred to the University of Virginia to do my, to complete my physics degree. Mm -hmm. um, but that paper from my first year at community, because I took one year off out of high school and I worked in the factories for a year, I thought I should I should work that job so that I would appreciate what it meant to what it means to go to college and not have to do that kind of work for life, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I wanted to have to live in that world for a little while, but then I go into school and in my first full-time uh, Semester I wrote that paper and it was absolutely it was this fascinating to me my most favorite piece of work through my entire undergraduate education and probably life and then fast forward to 2013 so major life changes and I'm like, yeah, I should go back and get that graduate degree that I was meant to get. And I'm like, oh, I know you, <laughs> and I live here, and I really want to be a computer scientist. <laughs> so I sit down, we said, do you remember that day? Oh, oh my God, what a day. I was a mess. And I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to code. And you're like, no, you don't want to code. I'm like, why not? I love to code. I should have been in computer science from the beginning. You're like, no, your son is your competition. You will lose. <laughs> For programming jobs. For programming jobs, solution. right? You will lose. And besides the waste of your skill set. Anyway. Oh, and I, he, said, he asked me, 
what, what is your what is your undergraduate degree? I said, yeah, because we've known each other for like 10 mm -hmm. years before that, right? Then he knew me all the, like, the religious side, right? Like all, all that stuff, which... Yeah, tell us. Tell us about you. No, and we're not talking about all credentials. that. Credentials. Credentials and all that. No, because yeah, I'm, okay. I'm like, you know, everybody's sitting in the penalty box right now, so we'll, okay. just, we'll just leave that. Um, so he kind of, we, we knew each other from other... Uh, Life. Other other networks and, and things in life, and so we sat down that day, and I said, "Yeah," because I remembered that he was the, had been the dean of this college, and I thought, "Huh, I probably maybe I should ask him." And we were in network science. I ended up in this network science class, and I was like, "Oh, that weak link, right?" And you weren't really a weak link, but you were not like a strong tie, right? In, well, thank in you my, very much. In I my network, it. but <laughs> like when you're when you're in that when you're later, yeah. we knew each other, yeah, yeah. and we had you know we, we'd all had dinner and stuff like that, sure. and um, but it wasn't like um, a yeah, close didn't friend. Meet frequently, that is true. We didn't meet that frequently, and so what's interesting is when you're looking when you're in that position where you're trying to make a new move it's those are the people who are the most important people because they are tapped into all these networks different, that networks. Are different networks right mm -hmm. so he sat down he's like no 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 why don't you come try to recruit me for dsba of course fair fair i would have if i were you too and i ended up in network science and i was like wait 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 you you um so this complex systems institute thing that's what and um, because at the time in '89 it was not really, it wasn't really a thing. It was, and it's still very, very new relative to other disciplines. And uh, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. And 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 I want to stay in academics or somewhere. Like I, I could just stay here. I'll just work in a university, and and I get to do, I get to do that, like research. Because 1989, right, like. And, um, yeah, it was one of the best. You ended up in the PhD program. I ended up in, I was like, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this, right? We're going to do complexity. He's like, what kind of research do you want to do? I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I used to, you know, trade options and stuff. Because you could look at stock market. Yeah, I know about that. He's like, you did what? <laughs> First, he was like, you have a what degree? And you would did what? And is there anything else that I don't know? <laughs> a million things. Um, but but it was funny because then 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 you ask the great question. So what are you interested in, right? Because we're trying to so the sooner you develop your your research topic, the sooner you will graduate. And uh, I said, well, I've always been very interested in stock market. Yeah, great. There's lots of data there. We can do cool stuff. We can like proof of concept, all of that, because. There's, it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating. But been there, done that, right? Um, and and I said, but really, what I'm interested in are issues of, of human rights, civil rights, um, social justice. That's I have whole sections of books on that in my house. And uh, and I said, but actually, I have a, a long-standing interest in genocide, which nobody ever got. They thought they were like, yeah, you want to talk about. No, can we talk? Let's talk about something else, right? Like, nobody wants to talk about it. And he's like, and I said, well, one day I came and I said, this, okay, let's, let's do stock market because we'll build this model to explore this set of attributes or this set of rules. But the end game is that's generalizable and we're going to end up at studying genocide with this model. And he's like, nah, skip that stock market stuff. You were cool on it anyway. Just go straight for the genocide thing. And I was like, what? Second best day of my life, right? At the time. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I have waited my whole life to do this. And what's interesting is that at 20, when I was 24 when I graduated, so interesting side note is that I went on and graduated with my physics degree in 94 and then had five children over the next 10 years. Um, so if I had, I never would have been ready to do this at 23. It came at exactly the right moment in my life, exactly the right time in my life, exactly the right friends to be working with and group of people to be working with. And it was all just here. And it opened up like this, this, this amazing gift. 
crisis. So that's my story. Well, you said an interesting thing, so do you want to emphasize what about you? Okay. Well, I did say I have five children. I think that's kind of interesting. It seems very interesting to me almost on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I've been thinking recently, and I don't know that it's that unique or that. Um, I was talking to somebody, and I said, you know, we want to do one day, I'm going to go on a world tour of libraries, right? Yeah. Best libraries in the world. Okay. Yeah, what other kind are there? The ones I don't want to go to. Can visit from your home? No! <laughs> Did you have to? And Very I said, that's the kind of, so he said, um, have you been to New York City Library? I said, never been there. He goes, ah, oh, man. Yeah. I was like, that's okay, we can keep it, we can keep it domestic, right? True. Do that. And I may end up with a kid in New York, so yay. And I said, but that's the kind of thing, like, you should go alone. Because I love, and I was in Atkins Library recently, and just walking like the stacks and looking at the books, and just, and it's like this, it's like this, I had to make myself stop, right? Because I could just stay and swim in that ocean of knowledge forever. Um, and I think that you can, you can do that with certain people, can, they have to be that person too with you doing that, you know, to where you can just explore that whole thing. If you have a friend or someone to, who really can just like sit on the floor and be like, so what's here? And just start pulling books out. I love that. And, and I found few people who, who really like, that's, you know, just leave me there. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that's we'll, one. We'll leave you there. Your turn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm Steve McNeil, and uh, I did my undergrad at uh, Purdue University. And so I did my undergrad in electrical engineering, mm. and I wasn't really that enamored with it. It's a lot of math and very structured, and so... You said electrical engineering? Electrical engineering, oh, yeah. Man. And so, <laughs> yeah, I was looking for something that was a little bit different, but that I wouldn't have to throw away my background. And so um, I was doing some research in visualization at the time, and UNCC has a great visualization department, so it kind of seemed like a natural fit to sort of come here and, uh, and see what, what was available. And so I initially started in the visualization lab, and then I went to the HCI lab, and then now I'm obviously uh, interested in what you guys are doing here as well. And um, so my research is mostly around uh, education, so learning, and around design. And so I'm really, really interested in understanding how uh, we move from a top-down model for education and design to more of a bottom-up model. So, I think a lot of times, if you think about like education, you're very, uh, this is how you learn, and it's sort of uh, delivered from on high, and sort of the dean, and then the instructors, and the lectures, and um, I'm really interested in trying to find a way to give students some agency in that process, so that they understand what they're doing, they understand um, what they're capable of, and they have some ability to sort of change and shape their education, whether it, you know, in academia or, or outside. And the same thing with design. I think design is a way that you can really change your future, but not a lot of people have a classical, um, a classical training in design. So I've been really, really interested in creating tools and systems that support end users, people um, like you know my mom, my dad, my family, my friends, um, and allow them to actually get involved in designing things that are really relevant for their lives. And so most of the things that I do are sort of around the idea of like democratizing education, and, uh, democratizing design. And, uh, some of those tools are, are rooted in reflection, so allowing them to reflect on their experiences and get different perspectives about what they're doing. Um, but others are more about collaboration. How do people collaborate when they don't know each other or when they're remote? Um, or how do experts uh, communicate with non-experts? So all of these things are really kind of tied up in that idea of, uh, again, social justice, of giving people some agency um, in the future. So um, so I think that's one of the things that's been really interesting about the CSI uh, uh, lab is the fact that uh, you don't really embrace complexity. And I think there's a lot of inherent complexity in, in these uh, different problems. But it's also not just about observing sort of the emergent phenomenon. It's also understanding the underlying agents and interactions. And, and I think that that's something that we do, we do that in HCI as well, but I think that 
it's been hard to find other people at UNC Charlotte that really have that same mindset. So I think once I came to a CSI uh, seminar, it's just like, oh my god, this is this is fantastic. You all like are doing like the exact kind of thing that I'm interested in, and uh, just seeing so many other kindred spirits was like really inviting for me. So um, that's kind of why I've been getting more active and um, exploring. I want to get in the next question, get back to something you said, but we need to give Yasmin a chance to talk first. Mm -hmm. Something interesting about you? Interesting. Um, Beyond the obvious. I mean, something that we don't know yeah. about your original. Something interesting weird. and new. So, okay, oh. so I've been cooking for a long time, and I just. All right, next. <laughs> what? No, I. Don't listen to him. So, I just. Don't bring your guys with blood here, guys. I'm not like cooking. <laughs> Tell us. So, yeah. so I just started fermenting food, okay. and <laughs> and I'd never been doing no food. Kimchi and stuff. Yeah, kimchi, kombucha, ginger beer, um, peppers. So you had to be everything. alcohol somewhere. I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and so that's been my new interesting cooking. Thing that I've been uh, sort of really into the fermenting. Yeah. Are you exploring or becoming an expert or doing I'm it? I'm trying to become an expert, yeah, getting into all kinds of fermenting, like cheese, meat, beer, um, but it's a very gradual process because it's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> and I have a tendency to just kind of jump into things before I know mm -hmm. uh, what they're all about, so I think I'm trying to be really slow and methodical about it. So what was the first thing that you fermented? The first thing was kombucha. Um, I met someone. I'm oh, sorry. What's kombucha for us? Kombucha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a fermented tea, and tea. Um, uh, yeah. I met someone online in Charlotte who had who was fermenting kombucha. And Go so on a dating site to meet somebody to cook. <laughs> Essentially, <with>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I show up at the door. Hey, it's me. I've come for the kombucha. It's like a little jar of kombucha. Mm -hmm. Right. Went home and started doing that. So yeah, it's very. Nice. Cool. Yes, I'm on. <laughs> what about cooking? <laughs> Fer fermenting, that's good. Yeah, tell us about you. Well, my name is Yasaman Kamyam. I'm originally from Iran, Tehran. And in my first semester of uh, PhD here, I took network science class with Dr. Mersa. And seeing the interesting real world project, research project he was working on and his passion on them, I told myself I have to work his lab. So this started and uh, from the start I was mostly interesting in, interested in um, investigating and understanding the behavioral parameters of people in the context of like different societies and their uh, effect on macro properties of the systems. So that's where I started and I chose financial markets as my application. See Elizabeth? Well, somebody's <laughs> got to do it, so, yeah. <laughs> and right that now I'm developing an agent-based econometrics model to investigate the parameters of traders' behavior rules on macro properties of the markets, like herding, bubbles, and eventually crashes. And herding is not just confined to financial markets. It's yeah, alive yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah, people but, discard what they know in mm -hmm. favor of what other people exactly. think or know. But since we have a lot of data in all frequencies in financial markets, right, right. it seems like a right. good application for us. And uh, you had a really wonderful presentation in Santa Fe, and uh, Josh actually mm -hmm. talked about it. Oh, so. Yeah. so tell us about you, something different, interesting, fermenting. And <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, one of my greatest suffering in my life is, that, <laughs> <laughs> is that I'm pretty general. I don't think there's anything unique about me. What? Oh, yeah. give us a break. That's impossible. That's, That's not true. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, something that I find interesting. Yeah, something that you find yourself to be at odds with most people around you. Mm -hmm. Other than your siblings or family. You know? No, it could be that too. Just oh, that could be that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> most definitely. Um, I that doesn't have to be different, something interesting, or uh, if I asked you what do you like the most, what would you say? Adventure. Adventure. Right. Okay, so then I have a question. What if you could go anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. one place, just one? like right now, I could just teleport you there, where would you go? I mean, it could be your home, it could be wherever, your favorite place. 
other than down. I have to be there previously. <laughs> no, because like okay, could be so like, my favorite. Could be like I just must do go like there one day, up. right? Probably, could do that. probably like the forest of Amazon. Wow. Very good. Very good. There you go. If she said she is ordinary, <laughs> right. I would never go never there. There are bugs that. over there. I don't know if you knew no. that, but there are bugs <laughs> in Amazon. No, no, don't crazy. We have to take with you. <laughs> you just need a guide. That's all. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. That's to, really interesting. Yeah, back to the question of agency and education. I also believe that education is by far the most important thing for the world. And so, but how does it actually work? When you look at uh, students a different age, they don't really care. They just want to get a diploma, get out and do something meaningful. They don't think about education. And what you said depends on a person, student, agent's understanding that I want to design it in a certain way to accomplish certain things. Um, Looking at you, not you already got it, but even in terms of life, right? Um, do you really use that agency that you inherently have, being it, a human being? Do you use it in order to maximize the opportunity both for you and the world? To what extent do you really do the best thing on yourself as well as the community? And it's a question for everybody, you know, not just, I'm not looking at you because you've grown up with right. issues. But your definition relies on, if you want to change education, we, the students, have to participate in it very actively. <coughs> how does it happen? Uh, how do we make sure people are ready for it? Every day we want to. But and what's your contribution? And what's your contribution, right? Uh, so, I, you know, how, even if you're now looking where you are now, are you really acting as an agent of change, actively? You seem like you're going down that path, but are you yeah. really doing that? Are you oh, fermenting? Well, so hey, my, my <laughs> baby. Yeah, you got to do that first. Yeah, you? I'm not sure I'm doing yeah. it now, definitely. Um, but I think that's definitely a goal long term. I think uh, a lot of things like just the educational structure that exists sort of propagates what you're talking about without understanding what the students want and what they're trying to do. But pre hard. we prevent that. We, we put uh, 40 people in the classroom and we 120. teach 100, 120, 120. And it's almost like a mass education. How can it be uh, if, if everybody learns differently and everybody has different thing and needs different? How do, we, how do you do it? Well, uh, let, me, let me reflect a little bit on that. So I think that one thing we first have to ask or we have, we have to consider is that not every society in general uh, nurtures people with... Uh, with a goal to change the world. So, for example, I, I or to make it better, or to make it better. So, I'm coming from Greece, mm -hmm. and I could confidently say that uh, culture in Greece or uh, in most Mediterranean countries is not necessarily to doesn't doesn't kind of a uh, um, uh, uh, train people or uh, or uh, or nurture people with the objective to change or improve the world. <coughs> so, so nobody in Greece is watching YouTube, right? <laughs> <laughs> not. I think that's generally most. Most Mediterranean, most Mediterranean countries. Uh, um, and when I came here in the States, I was really surprised because everyone in the States wants to change the world, or at least in the in the in the. And North they East. believe they can. And they believe they can. So I think that's the first step. If you if you have a society where uh, uh, most of the younger generations, uh, first of all, have the willingness to change the world, and second, they think that they can contribute to that, or they, th they think that they have the capacity to to do that, then you have already a kind of a population that is more. Uh, willing to learn. Uh, if you don't have that step, it's very difficult, I think, to, uh, to have very effective education, uh, education models. Um, so, and then the question is, uh, how do you do that? I mean, how do you kind of... Yeah, uh, how do you uh, so, is this stuff that takes place within educational institutions, or is this something that takes place with, within the entire society? Uh, no, entrepreneur, uh, uh, not entrepreneurship. Um, apprenticeship model is, is like that. There is this uh, master who knows Things and there is you or two, three of you, and he or she has the time to understand what you need. It gives you what you need when you need it in order to make you better than himself or herself, right? And send you to the world. 
you cannot do it for 1500 students in a classroom, but I that's what it would take. And you actively say, this is what I need, this is what I don't, don't know, this is what I would like to do, help me get there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and some societies are more open to that, some less. And so I'm not looking at you two or me. But <laughs> no, that's true. But would it be much nicer, better, easier? Yeah, right? I mean, growing up, we, we were sure that we have just two paths, becoming a doctor or, a, or an engineer. So right, that. we had no like freedom of choosing or thinking of what we really like or how can we really change the world. Just What is it that you really wanted to be? Well, right now, I don't even know. But, I mean, if I was was free to decide, I would probably go into arts or something. Yeah. yeah. That explains the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. far from that now, but... You know, but that would have been your choice. So. Okay, so yeah. Have you made your choice for what you want? Yeah. Have you made uh, the choice for yourself? Have you, or have you followed somebody else's? Idea of who you should be. No, I made those choices. You made those choices. Yeah, definitely. How about you? Um, for me, actually, when I started my bachelor degree, I was thinking like to uh, to start uh, an engineering school. To start. Yeah, yeah, or to enroll in an engineering to... school. But at that time, uh, uh, they I made a new rule that I have to take a placement test. Uh, to enroll in the engineering school and I missed that uh, placement test so I was thinking like what is the other option and uh, went to the science school in uh, our university and I, I was thinking like uh, to study for one year there then transfer to engineering again and when I start there uh, I found uh, the computer science department under the science school and they see uh, why I just uh, why I don't enroll in this program and they think it's it, it uh, maybe it will be better than being engineering and uh, I took the computer science introduction class that time and it was very interesting for me like this area and how how can I uh, make like a new software, new programs, uh, changing the people life. So I think it is uh, more interesting than being an engineering uh, engineer. So I just enrolled in the program and I found myself in this area. Uh, so it was like by chance, but uh, uh, there is a reason because if I, uh, uh, if I take that placement test, I may in uh, engineering school and not uh, computer science. If you got what you wanted, you would have been unhappy for the rest of your life. Possibly. Maybe. 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 Yeah. How about you? No, I think it's it's always been a course correction. Like I think it's always I choose something, and then I realize it's not what I want, and then I try to look to see from there how can I improve it to make it what it is uh, what it is that I want. And I think, uh, yeah, it, it can be difficult sometimes to just have a vision and follow it. I think um, there are a lot of things that are sort of out of your control, and I think that really the, the key is adapting to those things. So uh, making the best of your opportunity, and then looking to see what's next, and then making the best of that opportunity. And so, um, see, he embodies the principle we're talking about. At least the principle you keep things options open. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best thing. And you said you made uh, choices for oh, yourself. Oh, okay, so, right, you know, I, you stand and look, and so we were, we were, I was reading that document, and where you said, you know, your advice to us was, do you, right, be you, <coughs> be genuine, right, so, and I feel like I, I believe I've done my best to, to be that all, all of my life, and I think it's that constant process of evaluation, so here's my, Here's my set of things and me, right? And so what am I going to, to do? But maybe things change. And so then you take another look. And so you've made that kind of best choice, the, what looks optimal at the time, and you move on. You're like, well, this isn't exactly optimal. So you might make a huge shift, or you might just make a small course correction. Um, but I want to go back to, to something that you, 
asked before that, which was, um, are you making a difference? Right? Um, and I think that maybe we need to reevaluate what that means, what that looks like, right? Um, because if we study complexity, we know that sometimes one thing, one small thing, can become something far beyond what we ever expected it to be. And so we kind of move along making these little ripples. So I'm, I'm in one of those classes, TA for a class of 120 students. But to me, I am doing, I am using my agency to make a difference because every student who comes to me who needs help or who needs advice or who need, just needs to calm down and walk away from the damn computer for a minute, right? Because you got to go for a walk if you want to debug that stuff and they don't believe me and they never do, right? But I keep telling them that, like, go for a walk, seriously. So I'll go for a walk to the vending machine and buy a soda. <laughs> so cute. Uh, these kids are great. Um, you never know when it's going to be that one person. Um, you never know when you will be that instrument of change that you never expected. But if you are true to you and to your values and to your morals and to what you believe you have, and, and, and each of our contributions is different and it should be different, right? Because we need diversity. It's another thing we look at in complex systems. It's so important that we should not be doing the same thing, right? But if I'm making a little ripple here, Maybe the thing that that means is is the other person right here doing that, and that comes together into something that that we didn't that we did not anticipate. And so maybe it will, and maybe it won't. Right? I may die, and it's all just kind of average ish. But at least I'll know one that I was me, that I was true to to me, and that I took what I saw as the best that I had to give, and I gave it. And I didn't expect anything in return for it, right? So perhaps uh, because we're running out of time, yeah. uh, perhaps this is a topic for the next time. How do we help each other to maximize contribution? Right, to the and that's so. I mean, Gizam, who's over there off the camera, but seriously, Gizam, couldn't have done it without you. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. So we will try to do this once a month, just to talk about oh, really? your ideas. Um, create our YouTube what? channel and see what happens. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm meeting at 11.